we got one attendee. Two, Bob Parent. I'll make Bob a member. Do you, does Ray need to be a member too? I mean, both of them can speak up. We've got other people filtering in as well. So, all right, all right. Bob is coming in as a member. I'm gonna bring Ray in as a member. So those that are watching, uh, we had a little technical glitch, so it's just taken us a couple of minutes here. Apologize for the delay, but thanks for joining us tonight. I'm here, Amy, but I don't expect to say anything, so. That is fine. Yeah. Um, great. Okay, um, make you the co-host. Great. <laughs> then I'm going back to the beating. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, well, and, and welcome, welcome to the, the public and folks that are here. Um, we're here to talk about the War Memorial um, Community Pool House project and, um, you know, give, give folks an update on where we are with this project um, and, and get some really valuable feedback from um, you guys as community members in terms of a couple of the um, decision points that we're at. So um, I, um, I'll i introduce myself quickly. I'm Amy Rizeki and I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Public Works and uh, one of the people from the town working on this project. And um, I think some of the other uh, speakers here will, um, I, I'm guessing we'll just kind of introduce people as you guys are up for conversation, if that works. Um, <clears throat> Actually, Amy, Yes. Let me know if it did. If I, I'm gonna go. Let me know if okay. it dies. It Sorry. said it said that I was a host now, so I think I'm okay. Okay, Thank I'm you. going. Uh, thanks, Gilbert. Okay. Um, excellent. So, I am going to I think share my screen and we'll dive into stuff so that everyone can get brought up to speed. That's okay. Is that, we can see the slide? Yes, yep. thumbs up from someone, cool, yep. um, excellent. So um, yeah, we're gonna dive into this project a little bit. And so, um, yeah, so uh, you can see kind of the site that we're talking about um, in general, we have the Memorial Fields, um, which as people know, that's where the Zomac um, baseball diamond is and the football, field is right across from the high school. And then there's that terrace that goes down. And the area that we're talking about is kind of from that terrace that goes down and this whole area where there's the basketball courts, the existing bathhouse, the playground, the war memorial, um, that whole area all the way up uh, between Mattoon Street and um, Triangle Street there in that whole area is really the area that we're talking about in this project. Uh, and um, as you can see, we're partnering with uh, Kuth Ranieri and Berkshire Design um, as kind of the leads that are doing a lot of the um, work here on um, coming up with this design and um, incorporating all of our feedback. So um, I probably should. So existing condition. Um, yeah, so this is just another view that shows the area. So it's showing the... Uh, the high school over here in this kind of lower left-hand corner, and then this upper terrace that has the football field, uh, the Zomac diamond, the um, softball field, and then this, you know, kind of terrace or the slope that comes down to um, the project area in here. Um, so you can see the basketball court, the existing pool, the bathhouse, um, and then there's kind of this playground area up here. Um, and, and to be clear, the pool itself is the one element of this entire area that um, we're not necessarily touching with this project. Um, the pool is in relatively good shape and we, we do have CPA funding um, as well to do a couple of repairs that are needed at the pool. So generally the pool itself is staying and so we're talking about all, all the things that surround the pool. Um, so here's just a couple of photos in case you haven't been at the site recently. Um, so you can see um, 
the the basketball court in the lower right hand corner and then several photos of um the playground equipment which obviously look a little um outdated and uh not in the um best condition at this point um there's also you can see the um the stone um, in that lower left-hand corner, which is the, that is the war memorial. And so that right there is the um, kind of plaque as, as it were, that, um, that memorializes the, the veterans um, there. So that's certainly an aspect of this project as well. As we're looking at conditions, um, so the pool house itself, um, the pool house itself was built in 1953. Um, so it's had a good long life, <laughs> but at this point, it's really nearing the end of that useful life. And so, you know, a big driver on this project is um, needing to replace that pool house. Um, but part of the impetus in this project was we didn't want to just replace the pool house in kind and not think more broadly about what the other uses of the space were and therefore what the needs of that pool house was. Um, and you can see the pool house, you know, we do our best to maintain it, but it's um, you know, it's got some rough conditions. You can see, um, you know, some, a bunch of the shingles that fall down every year that we have to replace. And, you know, down here we have, um, some area where the, uh, flashing is, uh, lifting up a little bit and that's where the squirrels get in and, uh, do some, do some interior damage as well. Um, and then we have a couple of photos of the inside of the pool house. And so again, like we're doing what we can, but there's, you know, water and animals that get in there. And so, um, you know, generally there's a lot of, you know, paints that that's peeling that we have to fix on a regular basis. Um, and like, um, I think that that upper right hand photo is showing just where the masonry is, you know, kind of lifting apart. And so we've got a seam there that has to get, um, fixed at this point. So it's, you know, it's a lot of work to maintain it. And every year it's, um, it's tougher and tougher to, um, make sure that this is meeting all the applicable, um, codes and needs of the community in order to use the pool. So that's, that's a little bit on the existing conditions. Um, this is, this is the pool, um, just some photos of the pool. Um, like we said, we're not necessarily touching the pool itself on this project, but again, um, it's, it's certainly an, an aspect that is uh, within that entire park area. Um, and I think with that, I am passing it off to, is it Liz or Michael? That's uh, to me. To me. Okay. So Liz, if you'd like yeah. to introduce yourself. Sure. <clears throat> um, hi, everyone. I'm Liz Ranieri of Cuth Ranieri Architects and the project lead. So thank you, Amy. And thanks to the town of Amherst Public Works operations team. And of course, to any community members taking the time to join us for this public meeting for the War Memorial Community Pool House and the site design. So I'd like to walk you through the site program and the new location for the proposed bathhouse. So as you can see, the pool will remain in the same location. As Amy mentioned, that is not part of the scope of this project, but the bathhouse will be rebuilt on the current basketball courts east of the pool. And the diagram shows potential programs for the site adjacent to the new bathhouse. And all of these programs are under consideration. So in addition to the bathhouse, programs include a splash pad, playground, picnic area, amphitheater, a commemoration space for the war memorial, as well as a network of new accessible pathways um, with improved stormwater management. So at this point, before we talk about the, the building itself, I'd like to pass it on to um, Michael and Carlos uh, from the Berkshire Design Group, and they can walk you through the site design concept. Okay. Uh, Amy, are you controlling the slides? Okay. Whenever you're ready, we can uh, go on. Um, so yeah, I'm um, Michael Liu. I'm a landscape architect um, and lead designer for um, this project. Carlos Nieto is also on the meeting. He's the principal in charge at Berkshire Design. Um, First off, I just want to kind of reiterate what um, Liz had hinted at. What you're going to see here um, is is a concept for the site. Um, 
it's a blending of elements that we feel would work well and offer um, a new and exciting um, design for the site. Um, we're going to show you some slides with examples of some of the elements that we see would uh, that we think would be a great addition um, to the site to improve it and update everything and um, you know just be a great addition to the town of Amherst. Um, so I know that uh, we're going to receive some public comments and and you know we feel that that's absolutely very important in helping to shape the site design. Some of some of you have ideas. Um, you might have comments on what we're going to show you, but I want to remind you that. Um, it, it is a concept and it's a work in progress. And basically this is um, a plan to um, use for grant funding and to, you know, for the comments to help shape, you know, ultimately what's gonna, what the site's gonna look like. So um, let's look at the next slide. We're gonna show you some uh, slides with uh, site elements of uh, particular el uh, things that we think um, will, will be, you know, fun and good uh, good design here at the site. First of all, um, we'll talk about some designing with slope. As you know, there's that um, seven to eight foot um, embankment uh, at the site, which kind of separates the lower level where the pool and park sits with uh, uh, the athletic fields up at uh, the top. And um, we had received some early comments from uh, some of the staff in Amherst about ways to um, use that slope and we are wholeheartedly agree with that idea in trying to engage the slope and these are some types of uh, development um that you know people are doing designers are doing um more and more with slopes uh using it for recreation you know certainly there's some uh, images there some and below there's some amphitheater ideas with stone um various types of stone which which can also uh, function as plate um play areas. Um, next slide, please. Um, the other uh, aspect that we kind of felt pretty strongly about when we were looking at the site was a uh, use of water um, and how we can use water. Um, it can be a nuisance kind of a um, an element, but because of the pool, there's this kind of play with water and the slope at the site. And um, what we'd like to do is use uh, stormwater as a design feature, um, meaning using channels, uh, stream beds. Um, in this case, they'd you know, be dry stream beds most of the time to collect runoff and di um, direct the runoff to like a, a primary um, stormwater basin where it can be treated and allowed to infiltrate um, slowly in back into the ground. Um, there's other ways to use stormwater um, to engage um, the users so that they can actually uh, interact um, with the water. There's ways to collect water that, that make it interesting and educational, like collecting uh, roof runoff, for instance, is a, in, in the bottom photo there into some sort of um, planted basin. Um, some, some of the um, schools that we've worked on uh, they're using water and um, various play elements uh, that uh, allow water to channel in through, you know, these logs um, and wooden, uh, natural wooden um, sluices where kids can interact with the water. Um, and then it, I think that uh, just the images of the stone filled uh, swales there um, in the other photos is an attractive feature um, if they're planted well. Um, you know, where you, you're bringing some nature back into the design. Um, so we felt that was important. Um, next slide. Um, and the splash pad uh, was was an idea what, which it, we weren't sure if uh, people wanted a splash pad. Uh, we know that there's one down in South Amherst at Groff Park. I think that's the only um, water spray park in town. Um, this seems like it could be a good location. Um, you know, it would function as an attraction for downtown users that could easily walk to the site. So it seemed to make sense that the splash pad would go hand in hand with the pool. Um, so uh, the plan that you'll see um, in a few minutes incorporates a splash pad 
in, in the design. Um, next slide. Um, the next couple slides, we're going to talk about some kinds of play equipment for the different age groups, because we definitely want to engage and, and allow uh, or offer, um, you know, play opportunities for the age groups. And, you know, typically what we're seeing um, as designers, you know, we're dealing with uh, kids in eight that are at ages two to five, five to 12, and then teens and older users. And for the two to five year um, age group, you know, we see, um, you know, it, it's becoming more and more popular, the use of more natural elements, wood, earth form, stones, stumps, um, to create play structures and climbing um, apparatus. Um, so these are just some images that reinforce that idea to give you a sense of, you know, what uh, what can be done. Um, for, for this age group, we think that this is very appropriate and, um, you know, a way to uh, enforce uh, sustainability, the idea of sustainability using, you know, the natural elements instead of um, constructed steel and, you know, concrete um, type play structures. Um, next slide. Um, play equipment for the age group, five to 12 age group, you know, there's all sorts of stuff out there. What we're showing here in this slide are just some examples of um, more, maybe more customized equipment where there's also an opportunity for this age group to not only play, but uh, uh, structures that offer places where they can gather and socialize and, you know, um, gather as a group, for instance, like the bottom right structure, we find very appealing Everybody is kind of attracted to curvy, um, you know, amorphic type of uh, structures. And that um, structure that's pictured has these kind of like hammocks. Um, and, and over in the in, on the right hand side, you might not be able to see them, but there's kind of these hanging slings where, you know, a number of kids can hang out together. Um, but the structure itself is large enough that it offers, you know, um, space for, um, kids to play as well as, you know, other spaces where they can sit and gather in groups. So something like that, um, I think would be very appropriate um, at this site. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go on to the next one. Um, and this slide kind of shows, um, you know, something that might be offered to teens and older users where we have like fitness or, you know, obstacle type equipment. Um, not only are you promoting uh, fitness, but, uh, you know, a sense of fun and um, challenge uh, for the users. Um, we're seeing some, you know, more and more of this type of um, uh, offerings at, at various um, parks and, and even at schools. Some schools are doing these types of uh, obstacle courses, if you will. Um, I know that young kids, uh, I can speak from experience about this, is you know, young kids like to get on a structure and kind of do a circuit where, you know, you're not allowed to touch the ground or the ground is lava and you, you know, don't touch the ground, don't fall down. So, you know, they, they like a, a, a course, if you will, you know, that where they can kind of make a circuit and, and even repeat that. Um, but this is the type of thing that, you know, you can offer to um, the older uh, kids, you know, the teenage group as well. And certainly at this site, you know, we know that um, a lot of high schoolers cross this this uh, site to get into downtown. Right now, there's, you know, not much that's attracting people to to stay and use, um, you know, use the site for any specific purpose. Um, but uh, obviously, developing it in, in such a way, you know, we're, we're giving um, all age groups in town a chance to come to this central location and find something that that is appealing and attractive for them to do. Um, I think the next slide is is a, our conceptual site plan. Great. So um, this is this is the site plan that the design team feels would um, be exciting and um, you know and new and work work very well and fit into the site. Um, just to give some orientation, to the right is Mattoon Street, and across Mattoon Street to the bottom right would be where the high school is located. To the left is Triangle Street. You can see it labeled um, in uh, small letters over there. So, um, and obviously there's there's the hill that is between the athletic fields and this lower um, 
terrace area that is shown in uh, color rendered. So um, I, I don't have a pointer, but uh, maybe Amy want to just kind of highlight where the building is located. So the yeah, obviously the blue rectangle is the existing pool down below it in this image or to the east uh, is the location for the new uh, bathhouse building. It sits on top of the existing basketball court location. Um, the old building would be removed. And um, one of the reasons why the new building is sitting sitting in this location, and the architect and uh, Liz can to go over that, but it's an operational issue where the, there is a desire that the existing building remain functional while the new one is being built. Um, so this is um, the location that was chosen. But uh, we feel that this is very appropriate, that it kind of fronts on, along that long side of the pool. Um, the splash pad is shown in the location where the uh, existing building sits. Um, and as you move uh, into the center part of the site, you'll see the large oval. Uh, this encompass this um, encompasses two play areas. To the to the upper side is the um, area for the two to five year olds. Um, and we, you know, there's no equipment per se. They're they're just kind of representative structures that are shown in there. Um, at this point, you know, we're not sure of the surfacing. We know that it has to be accessible and a safety surfacing, but we're still looking at different options. And we know that the town is very interested in learning more about uh, this newer product that's on the market called Corkeen, uh, which seems to be more sustainable and not using uh, rubber granules. Um, on the um, bottom side of the uh, oval play area is the area for five to 12 year olds. And what you see in the center of that area is a representative um, conceptual uh, play structure, like the curvy um, uh, structure that I, sh that I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, taking up most of the space there. There's room for some other isolated individual pieces. Um, and then to the bottom, that's the, the light colored, uh, the tan colored circle that's actually on the hillside. Uh, we're showing um, an embankment slide and uh, the two lines are represent uh, a banister slide. Those are just um, uh, sloped uh, poles that are uh, set in the hillside. Um, kids can slide down it. They hang their legs and arms over the sides and slide down to the bottom. Um, as we move further uh, to the left, there's a small amphitheater shown there um, that would be built into the hillside. Uh, it may consist of some seating walls at the front and um, along the walkway, and then uh, some terraced um, seating walls in the back that are built into the hillside. Um, for And moving further to the left, as you work your way toward the existing uh, bathroom building, which is the uh, brown square there, um, below that is an area where we're showing a teen fitness or obstacle area. Um, and then beyond that, to the left, there's a, a, a ramp, accessible ramp system, which comes down from Triangle Street. Um, we do have, we, we, our office did survey the site, and um, we have information at Triangle Street all the way to Mattoon Street, uh, topographic uh, utility information. Um, and uh, existing conditions. And this um, ramp system would come in from an existing opening in the fence that's opposite the crosswalk that comes over from Kellogg Avenue. So um, this would provide uh, accessibility from that point down into the site. Um, and then obviously there's accessibility from the Mattoon Street side. You will see um, four handicap spaces on the Mattoon Street side. So we've enhanced and increased the um, 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 accessible parking right at Mattoon Street so that it's easy to get into the bathhouse building and into the site. Um, so the other feature that I wanted to just point out is the um, stream bed. Um, over uh, in the, I guess, maybe we'll start at the bottom, um, Liz, at Mattoon Street, um, the main stormwater collection um, basin is shown there in kind of light blue color. And we thought this would be an exciting way to, uh, you know, create an entry into the site and uh, access to the bathhouse from Mattoon Street by using um, 
two small bridges that cross uh, the uh, basin uh, across a small island, if you will. And then that brings you right into the main uh, kind of like a entry plaza area to the pool uh, building, to, uh, to the bathhouse building. And Liz will um, go over the design of that uh, in a few minutes. Um, be, and then if you move to the left, uh, there's a small, um, well, actually, it's not a small, it's an outdoor plaza with the uh, memorial relocated in that uh, circular uh, that's supposed to be like a, a raised uh, a wall with the memorial in it. But that area outside of the building, um, there's enough space there to easily handle 70 to 80 people standing um, in that um, on that plaza. Um, but continuing from the, uh, I want to go back to the stormwater collection basin. We're showing this, uh, you'll see the light blue kind of um, irregular uh, lines that move through the site. This is uh, the, the dry stream bed that collects runoff that uh, meanders its way through the site. And we thought this was an exciting way to use as the design element um, that has multiple purposes. It's an attractive feature uh, that uh, would bring the natural element back into the site. Um, the users are in a way forced to interact with it because it does wind through the site crossing it in several places um you'll see like small little um brown other brown um rectangles which represent small bridges which would cross over this um stream bed uh but these would be planted with native uh, materials and pollinators so that it could provide um an attractive feature as well as like something that you know would provide an educational aspect to um um you know the, the need for providing more pollinators and bringing nature back into our urban areas. Um, I'm not going to touch on every aspect of this. I'm sure you might have some questions, excuse me, about it, but uh, the, the design offers some sitting and gathering spaces. Um, there's benches uh, that are uh, envisioned throughout the site. Um, there would also be some lighting that we'd have to look at. Um, and obviously, again, this is a this is um, the the park portion of this, if you will, would be a future phase. Um, and obviously, some of the public's comments would um, help to uh, define or, or um, shape, you know, what happens here. Um, again, I'm pointing. I want to point out this is just a concept and and our vision of what um, can be accomplished here. Um, and we know that it'll change to some degree. So um, we're looking forward to hearing um, comments and suggestions from the public. Um, I think there's one more slide. I just wanted to emphasize how uh, the accessibility of the design. These um, kind of red, uh, uh, purple, I mean, uh, pink, pinkish red lines indicate um, all, the, all the pathways and walks that are accessible. Um, the only portion that is not accessible is the service drive that comes in from Triangle Street to the bathroom, existing bathroom building. There's too much of a slope from the Triangle Street sidewalk to get down to the um, bathroom building. So we found an opportunity to provide a formal um, accessible entry with the ramp that comes off of the uh, Kellogg Street crosswalk. But from there and from Mattoon Street, you can traverse the site and make, uh, you know, um, a pretty, you know, um, extensive circulation throughout the site um, uh, if, if you wanted to. So, um, and also the areas would also be accessible. The playground areas, the amphitheater would obviously um, have accessible opportunities as well as the pool, the connections into the pool area. Um, so I think with that, I'll turn it over. I think uh, uh, we're going to get into some... Um, discussion about phasing and the building. So I'll turn it back to Liz. Thank you so much, Michael. So before we uh, get into the pool house concept, I would like to address how we are looking at the phasing of the project. And next. So what phase one includes is uh, a schematic design of the enhanced full site, as well as basic design services um, schematic design, design development, and construction documents for the new community pool house. And phase two would include the construction of the community pool house. And then additional phases would be for the construction of the future site elements and improvements. Okay, next.
So prior to reviewing the building concept we've developed, we'd like to share a few precedents. Um, I did want to show this one in particular because we recently completed this um, pool house in Buckland, Mass. And it's a simple building with its main entrance and check-in designed as a pass-through pass um, from the entry side through to the pool deck. I also just did want to mention that some other public pool projects that we're doing on the East Coast um, are for the towns of Norwood, uh, Yarmouth in Massachusetts, and also Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Next. And then, you know, for this project, we, we looked at some really interesting precedents that we were excited by the materiality and materiality that, you know, could blend into the natural color palettes of the landscape, such as earth tones in the building to the left, but also um, tones around the, the richness of the greenery um, the image in the bottom right. And then there is the possibility for this project that it could have a green roof and perhaps a photovoltaic array. And that's the precedent image on the upper right. Next. So um, a, a design goal is to bring all of the site and building programs into relationship with each other and to really improve the connectivity between the upper fields, the pool and park level, and to engage that, that burn in between them. And note like in this sectional um, sketch, the stratifications. We've got the pool and park level and stormwater management and walking paths and plantings. And with a building that could relate and scale to the burn and to the upper levels of the fields above. Next. And just a very early concept sketch um, showing how the building could be developed uh, in such a way that it's really integrated into the landscape where its spaces connect and extend to its exterior surrounding grounds. So let's get into the project, the proposed concept. And again, as Michael mentioned, I, I did want to really emphasize that what we'll share with you is really a concept and it's a starting point. So your feedback is very, very important to the design team in moving forward um, and will really influence and shape um, um, what this project can be. So uh, one, one operational concept we were working on was to really think about how can this project, this, this building be optimized? Um, how can its use be optimized? Um, what I mean by that is developing the site designed for flexibility. So for example, when the pool is open, the restrooms and locker rooms um, are open to the pool side and they're locked down from the field side. But in the hours when the pool is closed, um, we looked at ways to kind of open up the building so the restroom and locker rooms are closed poolside, but then they could be open to the field side. So basically this is one building that can flip back and forth. Its programs can flip back and forth as needed. Uh, for whatever is happening during pool hours or in off pool hours. So let's go and to the to the building. I just want to add to that. Oh, Part of that conversation is we're looking at a building that isn't just operational for two months during the pool season, but one that's going to be open for a much longer season and can serve the needs um, for a much longer uh, period of the year. Yeah, that would be, you know, it's an investment and to really optimize that investment um, so it's really fully util utilized as much as possible was definitely one of our big goals. So let me let me walk you through the plan. Um, maybe, Amy, if you wouldn't mind moving your cursor as we talk, I'm going to start um, with the entry plaza. So the entry plaza is off of Mattoon Street and at which there's a gate and it's a check-in, a small concession, and a lifeguard station. So you pass between that volume on the right directly into the pool deck. And once you're on poolside, there is changing booths that are accessible, uh, drinking fountain, showers, entries to the men's and women's restrooms and lockers, locker room spaces as well as a family, um, family restroom and storage. 
Now the programs that are accessed on the pool side are laid out to really um, maximize and enhance security. I mean, visual sight lines so that anyone in the office can view all the activities um, on the pool deck and are related to accessing the building. And then on the berm side in off hours, there's um, the locker room, restroom, vestibules, vestibule that's open to access the men's and women's um, spaces, as well as the family restroom and community room. Um, anything else? Let's see. Of course, I mean, there's also this community room space is a new program that would be added to what you currently have is at the existing bathhouse. And that community space we saw is really a flexible type of space. It could be used um, for anyone in the community. It could be used by um, people that are organizing and running the camps. If it's raining, kids can be within the space of this community room. They can also be under the overhang that is adjacent to it um, where the picnic tables are indicated. So, um, you know, even during, you know, times of the year when the pool building may be closed, that overhang space can keep you protected from rain and, and sun when you're watching your, your kids um, or anyone, um, any children that are in the playground area. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, okay, so this is a bird's eye view that shows the community pool building in relationship to the to existing pool. And it's surrounded by perimeter fencing, as well as the splash pad you can see to the upper right in the playground in the distance. Next. And I'm just gonna run through the building elevations and then I'm gonna look at some renderings. So here's the north elevation from Mattoon Street. And we're looking at the entry there with the carved circle. And that's really the arrival point of the pool building. Next. This is the south elevation looking from the other side, from the playground side in the Memorial Plaza. And we're looking toward the new multi-purpose room and that overhang that we were talking about. Uh, next. And here's the long elevation, the west elevation, which is from the pool deck side. And here you can see within that gray area in the center, to the left, you, you, that's where you walk in um, through the two programs, through the, um, the check-in. And then what we're looking at, that longer gray elevation, you're seeing um, the access to uh, the changing rooms, the water fountain, and the doors that go into the family restroom, as well as the men's and women's uh, restrooms and locker rooms. Next. And here's a, a longitudinal section cut through the building. And we are exploring, you know, a green roof possibly as, as we talked about earlier and photovoltaic panels. You can see these indicated in the section along with a few skylights to daylight those interior spaces. And you can also see that opening that I was talking about between the check-in and uh, the, the restroom core. And that's where people will be walking in exactly right there. Okay. Okay, so let's let's take a look at some of the renderings. So this is the approach from Mattoon Street um, where the new accessible pathway would cross over those water management features that Michael had pointed out. And really what we're trying to do with the entire site is make it very interactive so that all of the water processing and management that's happening, they're becoming really beautiful features that are planted and natural and with pathways that cross over um, uh, um, along, the, along the access to the site. Next. And this is where we're moving toward the pool building. This is a little bit closer toward the entry where there is an overhang to protect the access um, and the building entry from, you know, from the from the elements. And you can see the pathway that extends along the berm on the left side, and that heads directly down to the playground and to the memorial plaza. Next. My screen is, oh, there it is. My screen's a little bit delayed, sorry. Um, uh, let's see. So here's another vantage point of the entry. So we've come all the way up to the, oh, go back to that entry. 
we've come all the way up to the entry and now uh, we are looking, you know, directly through that entryway um, from the entry side through the security checkpoint into the pool. And that's the concession that you can see right there on the corner. Okay. Next. And now we're once we're on the pool deck, we're looking down the side of the building and, you know, you can see all the pool facing programs along the deck with, you know, shade structures, structures, strategic plantings. And the pool deck, as you know it, um, we've actually widened it. So this is the existing pool deck with some extra square footage between the building and the pool deck um, to accommodate um, all of the users of the pool. Next. Don't know if it's flipped yet, but oh, here it is. Okay. Um, yeah, and now we're on the opposite corner, closer to where the proposed splash pad is, and we're looking back toward the pool building. And again, you can see where that carve out is, the gray, that's where all the pool programs are and can be accessed. Next. And, you know, this is a view from the other side. Um, and we're now on the pathway that is running along the berm. And you can see those gates. When the gates are open into that vestibule, that's when the programs that are including the men's and women's restroom and lock rooms are open to the field side. Next. And this view is looking toward the community room. And, you know, we're, we're continuing to walk down that pathway. You can see the community room on the right side. And then in a directly in on access uh, would be the Memorial Plaza playground beyond. And to the left is um, a pathway to cross that water management feature, um, stormwater and water management feature, um, connecting back up to the berm in the fields. Next. And now we are in the playground looking back toward um, the building where you can see the community room and that large overhang that we were talking about. And we're we're just on the edge of the playground looking at the Memorial Plaza and to that community room. Again, the berm is to the right and past that cross, that water feature um, as well. Next. And within the Memorial Plaza itself, you get a sense of what that overhang is like, you know, whether it's furnished with picnic tables or benches. Again, it's a place to get out of the sun and rain. And for any community programs that are happening in that space can open and spill out to the outdoors in the case of any kind of um, event or commemoration. Next. And we're within the community room, now looking toward the flagpole and the plaza. You can see how that spills out. And then from the plaza to the playground. And then we walk beyond the building toward the playground and the amphitheater. And you can see the fields, the berm to the right, the fields on the upper level to the right. And then we're at a distance looking back toward the pool. Um, you can see the fencing and the the community room and overhang of the building. And now we've gone up to the top of the berm and you can see that potential uh, community uh, amphitheater component that really utilizes the berm um, as a stepping mechanism, but also as seating. And we're looking down toward the, the, the um, pool building and specifically the corner where there's not only the community restroom, but a community um, space and public room, but also a community restroom to the right of that.
And, you know, this shows the gates, you know, the sliding gates open. And when they're open, the programs are open on that side of the building. When the pool is closed, they're open on, on the field side. And then this shows the sliding gates closed. That means the pool is in operation and in need of those programs on the other side. Open, close. Kind of one of our favorite things. <laughs> so I did want to share that we also explored, you know, a different color palette. You know, this building can be made of so many different things. Um, these are just two ideas, the one that's much more earth and tone. This one is um, kind of an essay in greens and really thinking about how that green color really aligns with the park and, and the fields themselves. So we'll just kind of flip through quickly so you can get a sense of this building kind of dressed in, dressed up in, in a very different way. Um, it's still very, the, the form is the same. This is an aerial view. And then there's a couple of shots, I think, on the next two slides that show the same exact renderings and views, but rendered in this, this green material to be much more part of the, the landscape components of the, of the design. Okay. And then I think there's one more slide again. These are comparatively the same exact views, but just rendered in a different color. And you can see it, it has a, a different persona, um, one very much of the earth and one very much of the, of the greenery and lushness of the landscape. Because both of these have the same goal that we want the building to very much belong and be integrated with the landscape design. I think that's it. And at this point, I will turn it back to Amy. Thanks so much. Thanks, Liz. I'm going to, um, we're, the time for the community to participate is drawing near. Um, I just want to, with all of this stuff, at least set the table a little bit so that we all understand um, kind of the, the numbers that we're throwing around in terms of the cost and, um, you know, partly we're going to need community support to be able to do this. So, um, so the rough project costs, and this is based on the, you know, not knowing some of these elements, but understanding that that phase one construction, so construction of the bathhouse and all of the associated um, stormwater improvements that we need, you know, roughly right now, um, that's in the ballpark of about 4 million, uh, which is a big number. Um, we, you know, as, as some of you guys may know, we did put in for um, CPA funding this year for um, $750,000. Um, we anticipate that that's going to be approved. I think right now that's on the proposed CPA allocation. Um, and specifically, that's um, that allocation is hopefully going to be used for matching funds for um, either a park grant or a land water grant, which we're hoping to apply for soon. Um, so that will hopefully provide another half a million to one million. Um, so we do have, you know, poor, you know, large portions of this um, that look like they're in a good place, but certainly, you know, we are going to need to, as a community, figure out how to close the gap between the CPA funding and potential grant funding and what the actual project cost will be to move this forward. Um, so again, I, I more just want to put that out there so we all understand um, the numbers that we're talking about. So um, with that, um, I guess partly we'll welcome public input, but I have, I guess, a couple of questions that I'd love to have people provide input on and whether you want to throw an answer in the chat or want to raise your hand so that we can unmute you and you can um, provide comment. Um, but specifically part of the design that has been just kind of thrown out there, part of the concept today, um, Berkshire Design showed several different user groups. And I think it would be really helpful for us to understand what user groups you guys as a community see would be using this space, whether, you know, they they showed kind of the potential for two to five-year-olds, for five to 12-year-olds, and then kind of a 
young adult slash adult fitness area. Um, and I'm curious what, um, if anyone wants to kind of provide comments or feedback on those user groups or if they feel strongly about one versus the other. Um, so I don't, I don't know if anybody All right, um, Erica, I'm gonna unmute you if you wanna. Oops, there we go. Oop. Erica, if you'd like, to, there you go. If you would like to provide comment on just kind of the user groups you'd envision here. Great, thank you so much. I, I have to say, first of all, there's a lot to love. I'm a swimmer, I love the War Memorial Pool and I think that the, the care and attention to sustainability and you know kind of making rainwater and natural systems evident is quite lovely so um and the, the building is uh evocative and I, I it's like doing all the things what in terms of user groups though and i this is the reason that i i piped in so i'm glad that you have that question top of mind is that i feel that it's the teenagers in our town that um, would appreciate stuff to do. And um, I've had young kids, <laughs> I've had teenagers. I have no, none of them are in my house any longer, but my my perception is, as I move through the town, that we have very few places to play basketball. Um, and this court is not often used. It's kind of a wreck, right? <laughs> um, so it makes sense to replace it, but I actually think that replacing it uh, would be uh, would serve a, a, a group of, of youngsters who don't have a lot of places to go. And so, you know, a, a ball court with, with lights um, and a water source, that's kind of all they're asking for. Although there has been a group of students looking for a skate park for, for many years. Um, so those are things that are on my mind. And I, there's, there's a really fantastic new playground for the littles in Kendrick Park. Um, and somebody mentioned, you know, we've got the splash pad at Groff Park. I don't know how much of this could actually be crammed into this site, um, but maybe it, the, the more attention could shift to students in the, or young people in the, the kind of middle to high school range and, and less to the, the, the kids on the younger end of the age spectrum. But I want to thank you for bringing this to the public, and I, I'm really excited that, to see this project underway. Great, thank you. Appreciate you sharing your thoughts, Erica. Um, I am going to okay mute you and Tony. It looks like you're also interested in providing some comments. So, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, my name's Tony Cunningham. Uh, so I have a middle schooler and a elementary schooler, and I would echo everything Erica said. I think we should, if we were to do anything, we should target the teenagers. Um, we're building a new playground at Fort River. We recently finished one at Kendrick Park and one at Groff Park. I don't think the town needs another playground. Um, and I totally agree with a skate park or basketball courts with lights so you can play all year round in when the when the daylight is short and uh you know sk splash pads and swimming pools have a very limited life <laughs> like literally just 2 months of the year so something that would um <clears throat> work for the other 10 months of the year but i have a bigger picture comment um if we had this kind of money to spend there are many other things I would rather see this money go to. Um, we just had a painful conversation at the school committee last week about funding the track and field across the street from this location. And due to limited funds, we, we are having to choose an option that's not ideal. We're having to keep a smaller interior field and a narrower track and keep it facing east-west where the sun can be an issue. If we had an extra few million dollars, I would rather see it go to enlarging the, the interior field and track and rotating it. Um, there's also Amy, where you work, is desperately in need of replacement. And I would rather see the DPW project move ahead before we tackle War Memorial 
or the fire station move ahead before we tackle War Memorial. Um, and then with the matching grants, I feel like it always costs the town a lot of money, even though I think we 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 go chasing grants, but we have to remember that the rest of it has to come out of our capital budget. And our capital budget is so strained right now. We just saw a budget presented today where our roads investment has been cut in half, our sidewalk investment has been cut in half, and we haven't got enough to do repairs of buildings that we already have. And so I think trying to put millions of dollars into War Memorial at this point is is not a good use of limited funds and also limited staffing time to manage a project like this. I feel like if you guys have the time to manage another project, I would prefer to see it be the DPW or the fire station. Thank you. They are beautiful pictures. I just don't think we can afford it. Thank you, Tony. Um, again, appreciate your comments, uh, especially being someone who works in the DPW building. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I do want to, and, and, you know, the, all of these comments are great. Um, certainly, um, the, the struggle here is without a bat, you know, work done on the bathhouse, whether it's a new bathhouse or, um, a bunch of money going into the current bathhouse, the cost is probably going to be relatively the same because that bathhouse is 75 years old at this point. Um, Without that, we may lose the ability to use War Memorial Pool, um, and so we may lose access to a pool. And so I think that's, at least in our mind, some of the, the driver on this. So I do want to kind of lay out very clearly that, um, you know, we may lose access to a real um, wonderful facility in our in our um, town if if we can't get a get a new bathhouse at minimum at this site. Um, but again, the comments are great. Um, I don't know if there's any other comments on user groups or any other comments that people want to share. Um, oh, Maria, you have your hand up. So I'm going to unmute you so that you can comment as well. Go ahead, Maria. Hi there. Hi there. Yeah, Maria Kopicki. Um, so, um, yeah, can you, did anybody develop a plan to build a new bathhouse or renovate the or do something with the bathhouse so people have a place to change so that it, they can use the pool but not everything else like do we have a bare bones what do we do for the absolute needs that we have um to have war memorial pool function and have a bathhouse and not do all the other stuff. And I mean, you know, for example, I mean, can it, I, I would imagine it could be smaller. Do we really need a community room and something that's really about an outdoor facility? You know, um, is there a low price version of meeting minimum needs that was developed? Yeah. I don't know, you know, Liz or Michael, or if either of you guys want to chime in. Um, I mean, one, one of the questions that I was, I did have kind of on my list was talking about whether we wanted the community room or not, you know, at, at, at some point as we're looking at the cost of this, it's a minor increment to have the community room or to have it accessible, say more than just the pool season but it also gains us nine months of use as opposed to two months of use. And so we were trying to, I guess it's, it's a valuable conversation. You know, how do we balance if we're going to put all this money in, is it a small increment to extend the season to nine months as opposed to have something that's only functional for two months um, or to add this additional use, but it's, it's a, um, again, it's something that we wanted feedback on is, is that where the needs of the community are. So uh, Liz, did you want to chime in on this? Uh, sure. Can you hear me okay? My internet yes. is a little bit unstable. You can hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Oh, thanks, Maria, so much for the, for the question. Um, I think that this concept is definitely scalable, right? And I think the community input is really important in um, the size of programs and 
the um, the extent of programs, but I just wanted to reiterate what Amy mentioned that you know with this building investment, we were trying to think how can we program it in such a way to really optimize the use for as many months out of the year. And it's a pretty simple structure of the building. You know, it's on one story. You don't have elevator issues or stairs. And so what we're really talking about is the scale of square footage and programs. So I do think that the community input is very important here. Um, but I just wanted to contextualize it, um, that the levers that we were trying to play with was, you know, what programs would, would lengthen the season for this building? And how could we use these programs as many months out of the year as possible for not only to maximize the use of the building, but to also keep the site lively and invigorated for as many months as possible, where there's reasons to be there and programs being used um, as many months out of the year as, as possible. But thank you so much for the question. I see, Tony, I, I do see that you're raising your hand, although I see that Matt Kane has his hand up as well and he hasn't spoken yet. So I'm gonna, um, Matt, I'm gonna unmute you if you wanna provide comment. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yep. So thank you for the design. And I have a few comments from a few different directions. Um, so in terms of, thinking creatively and um, coming up with something that's beautiful, you know, I think that's a good idea. And for example, if you look at the development in Kendrick Park, um, where before there was a playground, nobody really went to Kendrick Park that much. And then they put in this beautiful playground. And now anytime you drive past or walk past, there's a lot of people there. So I do think that coming up with a, a beautiful design something that's appealing that attracts people to the space is quite a valuable thing to do. Um, on the flip side, um, I, and, and also I'm impressed that you are able to fit so many different things into that two acre space. Um, on the flip side though, uh, I, I do think we need to be careful about how much we try to do um, and whether we can think creatively about doing things in a very uh, sort of efficient or simpler way. Um, for example, I see you put the uh, showers on the outside on the pool deck. Um, is there other things we can do with that pool building to sort of simplify it and make it smaller? Such, um, do we need actual lockers inside the building or could they be cubbies on the outside facing the pool deck? You know, could we just have um, uh, like you had a, a, just a changing room um, there rather than a full bathroom. You could have just a changing room and a couple of family rooms. And then that could sort of shrink the, uh, the size of the, the building somewhat. Um, I'm sure Ray Harp is very excited about the community room for running his summer camps. Um, I'm not sure beyond that what other uses there are, but uh, um, I think... Uh, I don't know. Uh, could 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 the summer camps utilize just simply a covered veranda space rather than having a full interior room? Um, so so any any kind of ideas like that that could simplify and 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 reduce the cost on that the building. And then similarly with the site design, um, uh, you've got like an amphitheater and a meeting space for the for the war memorial. They seem like somewhat related. Um, are they really two separate spaces or is that one one space? Um, and then do we need a splash pad and a young playground and an old playground and a teenage playground? Uh, maybe maybe we can sort of somewhat combine those. I'm not really, and to, 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 to the uh, one of the other speakers points, um, well, I, I, I don't really have a good read as to what the town needs. It, but we, as someone mentioned, we we did just recently build a playground at Kendrick Park and did a big renovation of the playground at Groff Park and upcoming at Fort River, there'll be a new playground. Um, uh, and there is, there is a chronic lack of basketball courts. Um, uh, so those, those actually are good points. I, I don't 
have a strong personal opinion, but I can reflect that what those people said does make sense to me. Okay, I'm good. I don't, thank you, Matt. Um, I don't know if there's other folks that want to raise their hand and talk about like user groups or just provide general comments. I'm going to throw out a couple of other of the kind of questions that, again, we'd love to get feedback. And and you, a couple of you guys have touched on this is, um, you know, as we're looking at a couple of the elements that we were thinking we might want to incorporate here, but that certainly we have throughout town. So one of the things that has come up is you know, the having a splash pad there, which obviously we have the spray park at Groff Park. So we already have one of those in town. Um, I guess it would be helpful to know, it, is this something, a key, you know, an element that we think we might want or not? Um, and similarly, the community room, again, that was something that, you know, we kind of thought of, you know, a little bit of an incremental cost, but to um, add versatility and an extended season and additional uses to this building. But it, you know, is that is that somewhere that we cut back? So again, if anybody else wants to provide comments on those two elements and whether um, they feel strongly either way, um, certainly raise your raise your hand. Um, I will say the community room we were thinking, you know, beyond just the camps using it, but also those could be used for, um, you know, meetings or for birthday parties at the location. Um, you know, we were thinking a, a little more broadly about that, but um, again, really appreciate input on that. Um, I see Denise just raised her hand. So Denise, I'm gonna unmute you if you wanna um, provide input. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm the aquatics coordinator for the town of Amherst. Um, I work with Ray and I just wanted to pipe up that I too, because I work so closely with DPW, um, I too feel the pain in terms of making decisions on <laughs> what facilities are next in line to be invested in. Um, I really appreciate the architecture planning in terms of thinking about this in a stepwise, our, our town decision-making being facilitated in a stepwise plan so that we could do the first initial needed stages and then build along with our relationships, whether that be grant funding, um, relationships with UMass to think about the ways that um, the local flora and fauna and science could be um, studied on such a site. Um, and thinking about the gift that two pools in the town of Amherst is, obviously is part of my heart and um, commitment to programming for both pools in this town. Um, Commitment to the community center touches on some of my public health background and thinking about the ways that we might utilize that space to facilitate a connection with the high school art community, um, the UMass art community holding um, not just like fiscally smart planning, whether it's birthday parties or, um, you know, conversation groups that all of our public spaces in Amherst are in short supply. So making smart decisions and thinking about where and how we can keep these two pools in function, even if it is just for 14 weeks out of the year, um, feels like a worthy aspect. But I understand the, the stress and the um, you know, the need for making smart decisions as we move along. So I'm really appreciative of the beautiful, beautiful designs we've seen today. And I'm really excited to see where we end up and I'm here to help. So thanks. Thanks, Denise. Um, 
Tony, I know you've had your, oh, Liz, would you like to chime in quickly? And then we'll go to Tony. Oh yeah, J just quickly. Um, thank you very much, Denise, uh, for your comments. Uh, I just wanted to add, we worked on a uh, 1960s public pool and natatorium in San Francisco, and it's in a Balboa Park neighborhood, which is uh, the highest number of kids in the entire city of San Francisco are in this district. And then the number one thing that the community wanted was to have a multi-purpose room added to this existing facility. And there was a lot of battle whether we could do it or not. There was the funding issues, but in the end it had, uh, it, it has so many uses and it, it's in such demand, it's kind of surprising. Like we didn't know what it would be outside of the birthday party space, right? Um, but we have, you know, the seniors chess club meets there and it goes on and on and on about who is using this and buying for this space. So I do think there's something about make a space and they will come, <laughs> but um, it is an expense and we understand that. And again, I did want to, to reiterate that the, the project concept is scalable, right? So whatever you guys decide, we can adapt and modify the design to support the needs you think are most critical um, as far as programming. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, Tony, you look like you put your hand down, but I guess raise your hand if you have a comment that you wanna provide again. Um, looks like you do. Okay, you've been patient. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're unmuted if you wanna talk. Sure, sorry, I was just wanting to answer your questions because you had right. thrown out a couple of questions. And, yes. But maybe that passed at this point because other people have said it. it was just about the community room. Um, but Liz just added some good comments as to what it could be used for. And also Matt mentioning the rec the Amherst Rec summer programming. Um, but I just wanted to add the, because I said basketball courts earlier, which I think are much in need, especially if they have lights and they're outdoors. But um the, what, the new Fort River project will have a lot of basketball available. Now, obviously it's not directly across the street from the high school, so it's not as convenient as this location would be, but it will, when it's complete in, in the fall of 26, it will have um, full size and half courts, um, which will be available to the community after hours. And um, the skate park thing, I don't know, if there's any, if Berkshire Design and, and um, Liz has have any ideas of the approximate cost of putting in some sort of half pipes or small skate park area and how that would compare to some of these um, playground concepts. But I know that's something that a lot of youth have been asking for. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> hi, I'm Carlos Nieto. I'm uh, one of the landscape architects and principal and Berkshire Design Group, and I've been, I've done a lot of the skate parks uh, for the office too. Um, you know, the trends in skate parks have, have changed quite a bit. And, you know, what used to be the, you know, the, 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 the Cadillac was, you know, those big bowls or, you know, half pipes and things like that. Uh, nowadays, the trend has moved to more like street style type of, um, Type of state skate parks uh, that are less grandiose in the sense of these big, you know, pools that cost a huge amount of money. Um, so, on that side, I, you know, we did a small skate park uh, in this trend in West Springfield, and um, in the last three or four years, yeah, it was three years ago, and that came in around two hundred fifty thousand three hundred thousand um, dollars it's a concrete small again small concrete skate park um uh and it, it's more based on 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 just doing street type of elements so uh, in a you know a playground is around the same uh cost for you know for for a playground with safety surfacing um so there there, there could be um that could be a, an option. You know, one thing about this location itself is, um, in particular for a skate park, um, you know, I, I, depending on what the community wants, um, it, there could be integrations of of uh, not a full skate park, but just having integrated 
um, what they call spots, <laughs> skate spots, um, where you can incorporate some areas for skating within the design and, and, and still have, you know, circulation um, and other things happening and, and not have to commit the whole space to one single use. Um, that would need to have very, uh, you know, uh, thoughtful design, obviously, so that we can, uh, prevent some conflicts as we say in the design world so that, you know, you can have kids who can actually do the skating and not be, um, um, uh, uh, you know, safety issue for, you know, say, you know, kids from two to five in a, in a playground. So definitely we would need to, um, consider that um, if we want to escape park here. Well, you know, one other thing is that um, it, this space tends to be very isolated to a certain degree um, because of the changing grade from Triangle Street, from the um, uh, fields, and also uh, the fact that you have the pool um, and that space kind of blocking, you know, the access directly to the space. So it's a narrow area to come in and come out. Um, and, and it's something to take into consideration, you know, if, if you, if you decided to have a, uh, or, or they used to be a skate park here. Um, usually skate parks are in kind of op more open parks um, with more open views, view lines um, just for management, you know, sake. Um, but but no, I think there there's definitely a potential uh for something like that. I and I was just I was gonna throw a question. Um, is the exercise side of things um something, you know, we heard basketball, we've heard skate park, but is the you know, exercise exercise uh areas uh like we've shown some examples for or more of the uh you know, obstacle or uh courses that are um, more for for older kids. Is that something that would be um, interested for the community? All right, Matt has just raised his hand. So Matt, I'm, yeah, you're unmuted if you want to talk. Yeah, it's interesting because Ray has been floating this idea of of a fitness court and it's sort of one of these things that it's a little bit hard to know how much people will use it because we don't have anything to compare it to right now mm -hmm. in town so i think it's sort of one of these hypothetical things i do know that people do come and run at the track from the community mm -hmm. um and uh if you put so uh, there are there are people and there is the high school sports there you know there are a lot of sports teams and they have a a gym inside the high school which is pretty close to that location mm -hmm. it's on that it's across the street from the the pool and the gym is heavily used so in theory it's quite possible that the high school would utilize fitness equipment or you know I don't know the 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 right thing whether it's more like this fitness court thing or some other the things that you showed, um, it's quite likely that high school teams could utilize that and potentially people from the community. But without having something in town similar to compare it to, it's hard to know. Yeah, in my experience, uh, you know, in the past, uh, there used to be these kind of uh, uh exercise cycles where you had areas along a longer path and those tend to be uh less used um and what the trends have been is to kind of consolidate an area instead of having them completely spread out um and then connecting those activating those by having you know we've we've had examples of libraries next to parks where libraries have then fitness programs for seniors and they utilize then those spaces so they get activated um i could see um again depending on how the school uh wants to do this not uh for the sports teams necessarily but maybe for some of the other phys ed 
uh, type of uh, courses uh, that that could be integrated into the curriculum, you know, going out to this area and doing other types of exercise, not necessarily what you would do in the gym. Um, um, you know, there's CrossFit, which is, you know, one trend in itself, you know, that does outdoor kind of uh, type of exercise work. Um, um, but again, there's, uh, you know, obstacle courses like parkour courses and that that sort of thing that could be integrated into a curriculum. So I, I do understand completely your concern of not being able to uh, see how it's going to get used if you don't have another example either close by or, or in your community. But um, but one way to make it work is to, again, just uh, be proactive and actually activate those spaces before uh, by creating some type of program that can be used with it. Um, um, yeah, I, I, one last thing I wanted to, you know, I know Liz has mentioned it a couple of times of how this project can be done in phases it can be and when we started the the design process one of the main things that we were looking at was what happens if you know we're build the main part of the project be the building and the park side of the project could be faced uh in in several different phases um once so i think that that's something that you know needs to be uh kind of thought out um that not you were we're presenting this big big idea concept um but really this could be just a phasing program where you have first the building um and some of the storm water that needs to happen because of a building that's being in, uh uh you know built uh, and then moving for from that point uh, into more of the park and and doing some of these other elements um as uh, as as separate faces, so you don't you're not committed into a large capital project upfront. Um, Thank you. Um, I don't know if there's. I mean, folks, feel free to raise your hand if there's others other community members that have comments that they want to add. This is all super valuable and is helping us um, kind of shape and really focus in on what the needs of the community are. So. Um, I guess if anybody else has um, comments or suggestions or feedback on all of this so far, Liz, if you want to go. Um, thanks. I have a question for the community. Uh, those of you who know high school students and are around high school students, I'm wondering, is it a trend that they're skateboarding to school? And that that's part of who they are and they're interested in skateboarding. I can try and answer that and say just merely anecdotally that, that uh, I don't sense that there's a lot of kids that are that are skateboarding is transportation, but it is a recreational interest. Um, uh, they're not point A to point B. It's not point A to point B recreation. I think it is a site recreation that we'd be looking at. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I've, I've spent some time on, on Hampshire College and seeing some of the Hampshire College students. And certainly, um, I, I feel like at least for me, it's a larger percentage than I would have expected at least um, do kind of skateboard um, to, I mean, to get around that campus, but certainly it's, it's something that I think I was surprised by um, the number of youth that are um, doing some skateboarding. So that, that's a, that's a interesting, I guess, interesting use or interesting need that I, I hadn't considered. It's great feedback. Is that, I don't know if there's anyone from the community that wants to chime in on that question. I'm not seeing any hands. Um, I'll kind of do a, I'll, you know, certainly a last call, but um, any comments? Um, Tony, if you'd like to unmute yourself and provide comment. 
Yeah, I had a friend visit me from Ireland with her teenage kids last year and her son, before he got here, had Googled, where is there a skate park near us? And he had me drive to the one in Northampton. And he spent the whole day there and he got to hang out with a bunch of other kids that were there. I don't know what the level of interest would be in Amherst, but I have heard anecdotally um, friends who have teenage, primarily boys, but girls also interested in this this idea. Um, the other thing I wondered is like, uh, so my kids like to go skating at Interskate in Hadley and they go ice skating at the Mullen Center at UMass. So if there was a way to have this be accessible to rollerblading or, you know, when the weather is dry and potentially an ice rink when it's cold. Um, I, I know our with our climate changing, it's ice rinks are hard to sustain. And we tried one in, I think, Ray, were you organizing the one in Kendrick Park this winter? Or Amy, thank you. People were very excited about it. Just the weather didn't stay cold for long enough. Um, I know it was, a, it was a wonderful swimming pool this winter. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's probably the way the climate's going. It's going to be hard to sustain ice outside. But um, but my kids like to rollerblade. So if it's some if a skate park can, or, you know, a pump track, I don't know if there's room for a pump track here, but riding mountain bikes or BMX bikes, if the same facility can be used by skateboards, rollerblades, and bikes. Um, I don't know if you have facilities that are interchangeable um but there's lots of kids who like to ride bikes and there's not really places that are good for them to do that it's not very safe there's a lot of places without bike lanes without sidewalks um so i know there's there's kind of a uh, rogue pump track makers in town like making courses up near umass up in north amherst near where i live um but there has been interest i i have this had this e parents email list with 800 people on it in the area who have kids, you know, 10, 12 and younger. And there was a whole pile of interest in a pump track. Like it was probably 50 different parents saying that's something they would love to have in Amherst. So I don't know if there's, if there's a compatibility um, possibility there. Thank you. I, thank you, Tony. We are looking at the intersection of those, of those different interests where, uh, we're sort of in early stages of a conversation about pump track, about, about uh, skateboarding. We're talking about those th those places where there is an overlap there. Yeah, and um, yeah, uh, and and for for good or for bad, I'm also I'm a mountain biker. Um, used to skateboard when I was younger, but I'm still a mountain biker this day, and actually visit pump tracks. Um, yeah, and they're very very. Multi-generational, uh, multi-skill type of spots. Um, this is a relatively small area for a pump track, but it doesn't mean that it cannot work here. And, you know, we, I'm working right now with Northampton uh, Cycling Club for their own and um and in their case they're they're looking at next to the northampton skate park uh having a pump track um so there is kind of a cross that you can have between skateboarders and 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 kind of these pump tracks for bikes um they need to be paved you know um so uh, the ones that can be used by scooters skateboarders have to be their asphalt or would have to be concrete um, but yeah, no, I, I, it all depends on the vision that the, I guess the community has for the space. I mean, for me and my experience, both those types of projects, both pump tracks and skate parks are, and I'm on, I, I feel old now, but they're more of a culture type of, of thing where there needs to be some impetus between the community, in the community to make these things work. Um, you can build a skate park, but if nobody skates around there and nobody really is interested in skating, it's not something that's necessarily gonna, gonna, gonna get activated um, as a space. Uh, the places that have been very, 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 uh, you know, the designs have worked really, really well have been areas where the actual community of skaters, community of, of uh, BMXers or other users actually are the ones who are kind of 
you know, put the put the call in for one of these locations uh, for one of these uh, facilities. So it would be awesome to see if there are people that really want it, and then we can, um, you know, build something for them um, that 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 fits what what their needs are. Um, so it's almost like a you know a survey or some other type of of way of attracting people that are interested in this to know that there might be a possibility of having you know a space for it thanks liz do you want to chime in as well well i just want to make sure there's a question in the chat amy that you saw that um they're asking about that's the one about um, timeline for how this is phased. Um, yeah, so I can try to talk to this one. Um, it, this, this question is specifically asking, um, if funding is secured, can you provide a timeline for how this will be phased, i.e. in year one, um, when and which portions of this project, year two, when and which portions, um, et cetera. Um, and so, um, some of this is going to depend on when we get funding. Um, but if, you know, if we're able to, you know, we're, like I said, we're applying for grants, um, July, I think is when we apply for them. Um, and then we'll still have a little bit of a funding gap that we're going to have to figure out how to get that funding. But if that happens, then, um, kind of in year one would be the bathhouse and, um, the kind of the stormwater, once we start disturbing the site, then there is a lot of stormwater work that has to happen. So, um, you know, ideally kind of in year one, it's the um, bathhouse and the stormwater stuff. But certainly we would like to follow up quickly after that in, in year two, if not in outlying years, as Carlos was kind of talking about, it might be a couple of phases to do some of the other elements throughout the site um, to be able to... Um, push that forward and, and break it up into chunks that allow us to make it happen. So I don't know, Liz or, or Mike, if you want to chime in on that, anything that you want to clarify on? I Not not really, but yeah, I mean, you know, obviously part of building a new building would be some semblance of, you know, what's going on directly around the building. I think that, you know, you'd want to um, you know, if you did, for instance, if you didn't have a community space, I think it would still be um, useful and attractive to have an outdoor, you know, plaza, if you will, or gathering space associated with the building. Certainly, there's going to be some need for um, some utility work, stormwater, as well as um, uh, potentially some type of parking improvement. There's probably some accessibility issues that we need to look at that would be included in that. But um, but that first phase, you know, would include basically work that would be up uh, closer to Mattoon Street, you know, most likely if this is, if this turns out to be the um, the, the location for the new building, you know, that was shown in, in, in our site concept. And certainly the, the park portion, um, it could be could happen in phases and you know maybe the layout changes to make future phasing easier to break that up into you know phase two or three or four or, or what have you um so you know that's something that obviously you know we'd have to look at depending on um you know what uh, what the priorities are and and you know what what the community would like to see there thank you um, I'm going to, I mean, certainly I'm going to say that, um, first of all, thank you for everyone from the community for providing comments and asking questions and, um, you know, kind of helping shape this conversation. And, um, that's given us a lot to think about. And we'll certainly go back with, uh, Kuth Ranieri and, uh, Berkshire Design with all of this input to try to talk about where we go, um, uh, I, we are, um, certainly if folks have comment that they didn't necessarily want to say tonight, um, they can, um, you know, email me at, or just email even, um, you know, public works at amherstma.gov, um, or you can, you know, you can email me specifically about the project, but certainly feel free to, uh, provide comments, um, on the project thoughts, um, 
all of that weighing in on some of these questions. If you didn't have a chance to say your comments, um, that would be great. We're gonna, um, we'll put the presentation um, that Kuthranieri put together, we'll make that publicly available and certainly this, this recording as well. So if there's anyone that wanted to see what the kind of vision is here and wants to provide comments, there'll be opportunity for that as well. Um, and I guess with that kind of next steps, we're going to take all this feedback, think about things again. Um, you know, we're, we're really hoping to put together, um, some grant applications for later, um, uh, later this summer, really. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the, the next steps from here. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any other closing comments. I mean, otherwise I'll, I'll thank, thank, you know, Kuth Ranieri and Berkshire Design for being, um, you know, wonderful partners and really kind of helping to um, give us a lot to think about, about this space and, and, you know, hopefully continuing to move this project forward. So Liz or Mike, I don't know if you guys want to say anything. I just want to say thank you so much, Amy. And we have had uh, quite a wonderful time collaborating and thank you, Carlos and Michael for your collaboration. I have to say that comments are really important to us and we so appreciate you taking the time because I know it's like evening and we, everyone has so many commitments, but it's very meaningful for us um, to go back and reflect on um, how to develop this going forward. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to echo that. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate hearing the comments and, and what you had to say. It, 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 some of it was eye-opening, um, I, I have to say. Um, and it's given us a lot to think about. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to have to uh, regroup a little bit, reevaluate and determine, you know, where we're going from here. But uh, it's much appreciated. Um, you guys spending your time, your evenings, um, you know, listening to the presentation and providing your um, comments and suggestions. So thanks. Thanks. And have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Good night. All right. Good night.